Exceptions are extremely expensive and you shouldn't use them. Is there some truth to this statement or is it just exaggeration? That's what we're going to discuss in this video. There is a general notion in software engineering and especially in the .NET ecosystem that exceptions are expensive. And what I mean by this is that exceptions are going to reduce the performance of your application because either you will have to handle them or the framework will do that on your behalf. We'll get back to the expensive part in just a moment, but let's discuss what are some use cases for exceptions. The recommended use case for exceptions is for, you guessed it, exceptional situations. The problem arises when people start using exceptions for flow control inside our application and I'm going to show you what that looks like in the practical part of this video. In general, you want to use exceptions when you encounter a state inside of your application that you don't know how to recover from. In that case, it is acceptable to throw an exception that should contain some information about why you couldn't proceed with normal execution inside of your application. In this regard, exceptions help you implement the fail fast principle. The main takeaway that I want you to get from this is that you should use exceptions for exceptional situations. Now, what constitutes an exceptional situation is going to vary based on what you are building. If you are building a library that's going to be used by other developers, you will probably end up using exceptions more frequently. However, if you are building an enterprise application, then you should probably be more careful with how often you use exceptions. So let's discuss what could be an alternative when it comes to handling errors inside our applications. You can group all application errors into two large groups. There are errors that you know how to handle, and then there are errors that you don't know how to handle. Exceptions are excellent for the latter case, that is when you run into errors inside of your application that you don't know how to handle. Because you don't know how to proceed with normal execution flow, you're just going to create a new exception and throw that. However, in most cases, we probably know how to handle a specific error, so it's appropriate to use something different other than an exception, and a possible solution could be using the result pattern that could contain some sort of error code inside describing what went wrong. In that case, we can avoid some of the performance penalties of using exceptions. I said at the start of this video that exceptions are extremely expensive, however, I'm not the only one who thinks like this. Here is David Fowler, who is a distinguished engineer at Microsoft and one of the more influential people on the ASP.NET Core team, He's also the creator of SignalR, and he left this comment under a discussion in a GitHub issue saying that exceptions are extremely expensive and they are even more expensive in ASP.NET Core pipelines. I'm going to leave a link for this specific comment in the description of this video so that you can check out the entire thread for additional context. So let's say that we agree that exceptions are slow, but the question is, can we prove it? Now, what I'm going to show you isn't a fundamentally new idea. It's been covered by many other creators on YouTube. This is just going to be my take on this specific problem. And let's jump into the practical part and let me show you what I mean. We're going to examine a simple minimal API with two endpoints. There is a post endpoint accepting a create user request and it's going to send this request to a user service that's going to attempt to create a user and store that user in the database. To achieve this, it's going to use the create user or throw method and then we have another endpoint for getting a user with a specific ID that also uses the user service with the get user or throw method. Let's take a look at the user service implementation and see what's going on inside. I'm using an MPG SQL data source to access my database. So I'm using Postgres and then I'm using Dapper to write SQL queries for interacting with the database. Inside of the create user or throw method, we're going to first validate the create user request. I'll show you what the implementation of that looks like in just a moment. And if we run into any validation errors, we're going to throw a user validation exception that contains these errors. Otherwise, we have succeeded in our validation check and we're going to open up a database connection, insert a user into the database. We're going to return the user identifier because it's generated inside of the database. And then we return that from this method. Let's take a look at the validate user method. All it's doing is checking the first name, last name, and the date of birth on the create user request, and then adding an appropriate error depending on what's problematic. If we take a look at the get user or throw method, you will see that it's very similar. It's opening up a database connection, fetching a user from the database, and then if the user is null, meaning that it doesn't exist in the database, we're going to throw a user not found exception. Now let's take a look at how these exceptions are implemented. We have the user not found exception here, then implements some base exception class, 
called a not found exception. And if I take a look at the user validation exception, you will see that it implements the base class, which is a bad request exception. And this is a typical implementation of flow control using exceptions. You will end up creating base exception types to represent the possible failures inside our application. And then you implement a global handler that's going to return some API response based on the exception type. So this is the bad request exception. We also have a not found exception. We could have a conflict exception and each of these exception types would nicely match the respective status code that we want to return from our API. All of this is handled inside of some global exception handler. In this implementation, I used an I exception handler implementation and here is what that looks like. I'm going to write a switch expression on the exception type and then if this is a not found exception I'm going to return one instance of a problem details if it's a bad request exception I will return a different instance of a problem details in this case is going to also contain an errors collection in the extensions in the extensions property and in the default case let's just return a 500 internal server error then we're going to set the response status code and write the problem details as a json into the response body and finally since we have successfully handled this exception we can return true to satisfy the signature of the try handle async method which belongs to the i exception handler interface this interface was introduced in dotnet 8 and to use it you need to register it as a service by calling add exception handler and specify your implementation and you also need to introduce the exception handler middleware which is going to capture any unhandled exceptions and pass them along to your custom exception handler implementation so let me quickly show you how our api is working when we are using exceptions for flow control if i send a post request to the version 1 endpoint for creating a user with all of the fields invalid so i'm going to specify an empty first name empty last name and a null date of birth this is the response that we're going to get let me send just a fresh request so that you can see that this is working the response will contain a problem details and is going to tell us what is wrong with our request let's also take a look at the get endpoint I'm using some identifier of a user that doesn't exist in the database and if I send this request I will keep getting a 404 not found response and again the response is going to be a problem details response and remember that this is using exceptions for flow control so in this case because the user doesn't exist in the database we're going to return null which is going to cause us to throw a user not found exception which is going to be handled by our global exception handler so how can we test the performance of this implementation and then compare it to something that should be better well we can use something like k6 which is a load testing tool and it allows you to write a script that you can use to run your load tests i already prepared some k6 scripts ahead of time so let me walk you through the implementation what i'm configuring here is a test that's going to last for one minute and it has two stages in the first 10 seconds of our test we're going to slowly ramp up to 20 virtual users and then for the remaining 50 seconds we're going to stay at this load level our actual performance test is going to create a request that's going to be sent to our api and we're going to use the http module from k6 to send a post request to the version 1 users endpoint we're going to send this request object in the request body and finally we're going to check the response and verify that we get back a 400 response which represents a bad request and remember that we end up setting the status code from the bad request exception in order to run our performance test you need to have k6 installed and then you can execute the k6 run command from your command line interface and specify the k6 script that you want to run so let's go ahead and run this script and you can see that it is slowly ramping up to 20 virtual users you can also see how many requests we are getting which is represented by this number here and of course i'm not going to make you wait for an entire minute while this test completes so let's just jump into the results so here are the test results and you can see that all of our checks completed we managed to send 134,000 requests which comes out to about 2200 requests per second now this gives you something like 8 million requests per hour which is more than enough for probably most applications out there but i'm just giving you a reference it doesn't mean that you will have this many requests if you are using exceptions for flow control and remember in this performance test we are sending an invalid request to our api which is going to throw a bad request exception that's going to be picked up by the respective exception handler and in that specific flow we are able to handle 2200 requests per second let me also show you the performance of the get endpoint when we are fetching a user that doesn't exist and here are the results for this performance test 
where we are fetching a user that doesn't exist, which is going to throw a not found exception that's going to be handled by the exception handler. In the end, we get a 404 response, so you can see that our checks completed. We managed to handle 145,000 requests in one minute, which comes out to about 2400 requests per second. And now let's discuss an alternative implementation for managing errors inside our application that doesn't require throwing exceptions. Let's introduce another method to the user service that is going to create a user and when we encounter a validation failure, we will not be throwing an exception, instead we're going to return some sort of error result. So I'm going to add the implementation for this method that I will call create user or fail. You will see that it's pretty much identical to the previous one with the only difference being this line of code here and the return type of this method. Instead of returning just an integer representing the user identifier, now I'm returning some sort of result object. And this is an abstraction that I define inside of my application that I'm going to show you in just a moment. But first I want to note that when we encounter any errors while validating the create user request, we're going to return a failure result. So we are being explicit that this method can fail and we express this using the result class. The result is going to contain some error. In this case, it's going to be a validation error that can contain additional errors inside. And then we need to come up with a way to map this into a problem details response. So let me walk you through this implementation. And let's start from the result class, which just contains a success and failure flag and an error object describing what went wrong for the specific failure result. There are also some helper methods to help you create success or failure results. And then there is a generic result type allowing you to encapsulate a value inside of the result object. Now, this is my custom implementation that I've been using throughout the years. However, you do not need to implement this yourself. And that is because there are many NuGet packages that you can use that already contain a result abstraction or something similar to this. And these NuGet packages are the language extensions package, fluent results, artless result, error or, or one off that you can use to implement a discriminated union, which is very similar to the result abstraction that I'm using. And there is also the C sharp functional extensions library, which also contains a result abstraction. So any of these libraries are probably going to be sufficient for you, or you could roll your own custom abstraction because this isn't too complicated and you can modify it based on your requirements. Now let's jump back into our implementation. We also need to handle the second method in the user service that was throwing a not found exception. And I'm also going to create a get user or fail method, which is going to return a respective failure result, in this case containing a user's not found error. Now, in order to expose these methods from our API, I'm going to create another set of API endpoints which are going to be using the version two. I'm not implementing API versioning properly. I'm just hard coding it to make things simple. But what I'm doing here is calling the methods that return a result from the user service. And then I'm handling this result with some extension method called match. And this is a very simple extension method on the result type. All it does is allow me to execute one function if this result is a success result and another function if this is a failure result. So you can see this is just a ternary operator. I'm calling on success if this is a success result and on failure if this is a failure result. And now if I go back to my endpoint, you can see that in the success case, I'm accepting the user identifier and using it when I'm calling the results created at route method. Otherwise, I'm returning some sort of problem response from the API results class that I'm going to show you in just a moment. And in the get endpoint, we can return results okay if the user result is successful Otherwise, we are going to return a problem response. And let me show you the API results problem method, which is just going to convert the result object into a problem details response by calling the respective problem method. So nothing too fancy here. It's very similar to what I already had in the global exception handler. And now let's check out the performance of this implementation that uses the result pattern. I'm going to run the version two of my K6 script which is just going to call the version two endpoint. And let's run the performance test for fetching a user that doesn't exist. Only this time we will be using the result pattern. I'm not going to make you wait for this entire test to complete, but you can see from just the first few seconds of this test running that we have already surpassed the total number of requests that we had when we were using exceptions for flow control. And here are the results of our performance request. And as you can see, we got 845,000 requests 
in one minute. This comes out to about 14,000 requests per second, which should give you something like 50 million requests per hour. For comparison, the implementation that was using exceptions for flow control was around 2,400 requests per second. So this is almost seven times faster for just replacing an exception with a result object. And here are the results for the performance test of the post endpoint for creating a user that's using the result pattern, where we are able to get 1,200,000 requests in one minute, which is about 20,000 requests per second. So we can definitely conclude that exceptions are slower than using the result pattern, but let's also discuss some of the other caveats of using results. When you are using the result pattern, it's going to reflect on your entire code base because all of your methods in a call chain are going to need to handle a result object. Although I personally find value in this because it makes my APIs more honest, most people do not because first of all, this isn't the natural way of doing things in C-sharp. And secondly, you will have to check the result of every method returning one. In case you get a failure result, you probably want to fail fast as well and continue returning the failure result until you can return something to the API caller. Another issue with the result pattern is that nothing is forcing you to handle the result, so you can cheat a little. Whereas with exceptions, you probably have to handle the exception somehow, or the framework is going to handle that exception for you and return some sort of response. Another thing to note with exceptions is how often are you actually going to run into exceptions? For example, here we are throwing an exception in case of a validation failure, but you will probably also have validation present on the client side, and there is a relatively low chance that you will get a bad request landing on your API. Now, this is different if you are building a public API that anybody can call, and in that case, exceptions are probably going to be more expensive, but just giving you some food for thought. All things considered, if you are using exceptions for flow control, be aware that you are sacrificing some performance and using a result object to express application failures is going to be significantly faster in ASP.NET Core at least. If you want to learn more about using the result pattern, then you should watch this video next. Make sure to check out my clean architecture and modular monolith courses if you want to improve your skills. And until next time, stay awesome.